We always strive for family-friendly content. However, our videos are not intended for and should not be viewed by children ages 13 and under. Thank you. Hey guys, welcome to Big Joe and Malia's World. Tonight, Big Joe and I are making thumbprint cookies. Mm -hmm. thumbprint cookies these cookies are so good and they're so easy to make they take just a few ingredients and I will include the complete ingredient list at the end of the blog here's what you got to have you got to have two sticks of butter and guess what guys you won't believe it it's unsalted butter you got to have unsalted butter got to have sugar egg yolks vanilla salt flour and you've got to have some sort of jam. In this case, we are using wild blueberry because that's Big Joe's favorite in the honey. Mm -hmm. And we're also going to try partridge berry and apple jam. This was sent to us from Canada from our good friend Lily. So we're going to try both of these. All right. Also, you're going to need a bowl with a little bit of sugar in it, and you're going to need a parchment paper lined baking sheet. So let's get started. First thing you got to do, guys, you've got to two sticks of butter in your mixing bowl. Now, if you don't have a sand mixer, it is quite all right. You can use a hand mixer. You could probably all also mix these um, by hand. It'll probably take a little longer, but it's perfectly okay. One thing you have to remember in this recipe, all your ingredients need to be at room temperature, including the egg yolks, including the butter. So we're going to start with the eggs. Sorry, we're not going to start with eggs. We're going to start with the butter and the sugar. And we're going to mix those together for just a minute. Cream them together. going to do we're going to add the egg yolks. I might have a spoon for this egg yolk. Two egg yolks room temperature and we're going to put the vanilla in there. Then we're going to put the salt in there. Now the reason you have to have salt is because we are using flour that is not self-rising. It is just all-purpose flour. So to help it rise just a little bit, you do have to use a little bit of salt. All right, now this is really thick business right here. So what I recommend is you scrape it down really, 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 really good because that sugar and that butter sticks to the sides and the bottom of this bowl like nobody's business. No joke. All right. So. We're going to give it another mix until that gets all mixed up. All right. Now you're going to turn on low. You're going to turn on a low speed. And what you're going to do now, you're going to gradually, you can use your spoon if you want to, you're going to gradually add this flour. Just like this. It's quite a bit of flour too. It'll kind of catch off guard. It's a little bit, you think it's a lot. You think it's too much, but add the flour. 
Leave it on a low speed or you will you will shoot that flower all over the kitchen and your hair and yourself and your hair. I've done it. Many, many, many times. Alright, now if you look at this batter guys, it looks pretty crumbly. Okay? So you just gotta keep mixing. Once you get all the flour in there, you can turn it up a little bit. And you'll see that it stops looking so crumbly and it starts actually looking like cookie dough. All right. Now, once you get this part done, you're gonna have to take your spoon and you're gonna have to get it out of your attachment here. Cause it's gonna stick like glue. That's a fact. All right, now. What you're going to do now, let's take this attachment off here. There's what it looks like. I can smell it, can't you? Yeah, it smells good. <laughs> it's a good sugar cookie recipe, basically what it is. So with clean hands, guys, you're going to take a little bit of this cookie dough, about a teaspoon or so, form it into a ball just like this. Then you're going to immediately roll it in the sugar. Okay. And you are going to put these on your parchment paper lined baking sheet. Just like this. And you can just keep going. You can just kind of eyeball it. I mean, they don't have to be perfect. I mean, if you were having these for a party or some sort of gathering or something like that, you want to make them a little more uniform maybe. But otherwise, just do the best you can. Get them together. You want to put them about an inch apart on your baking sheet so they don't stick together so they remain really pretty. Alright guys, once you get all your cookies rolled out and rolled into the sugar, here's what it looks like on your pan. Um, next thing you want to do, you want to make, you want to put thumbprints in them because you got to have a place to put the jelly and that's why they're called thumbprint cookies. So, what you do, take your thumb. And you want to just make an indention in the top. Just like that. See? In the very top, you just want to take your thumb, make you a little, make you a little jelly well in there. You can use any finger really. I usually end up using both. Because your fingers aren't round. Tips of your fingers aren't round. All right, guys. Once you get all your thumbprints in your cookies, here's what they look like. Looks like cookies with dents in them. That's what they're supposed to look like. So, what are you going to do in those dents? You're going to put your jam in there. We do have two kinds. Like I said, we have wild blueberry, which is Big Joe's favorite. And we do have another one that is called partridge berry and apple jam. I have no idea what that tastes like. This came from Canada. Our friend Lily sent us this, so thank you, Lily. But we're going to try it in our cookies. So what you got to do, it takes, of course, just a very, very little of this jam. Just like that. And you want to just fill up the little dent. Now, it is easier if you use something that's got a thick consistent little consistency like this jam does. So it's not runny and it doesn't absorb into the cookie batter before you put it in the oven. All right, guys. Now, you can use any kind of jam you want to use on this. You can use strawberry. You can use blackberry. You can use peach. You can use, well, we're using blueberry. You can use snozberries, but you don't want to use what kind of berry, honey? Don't use dingleberries. Yeah, you don't want to use dingleberries in this. That would be gross. But anyway, you can use any kind of jelly. So here's what they look like when you get the wells filled. Don't they look pretty already? They look great. <laughs> and you're going to want to put these in a preheated 350 degree oven for about 12 minutes. We'll be right back. All right, here's the thumbprint cookies right out of the oven. You do want to transfer these to a wire rack before you serve them to make sure that they cool all the way. So that's what I'm going to do. Just let them cool for a few minutes and we'll let Big Joe do the taste test. 
All right, guys, here's Big Joe with the taste test. He's got one of each on his plate there. We've got, this one is the blueberry, the wild blueberry jam, and this one is the partridge berry and apple jam. I have no idea what partridge berry tastes like, do you? Me neither. Okay, so which one are you going to have first? Wild blueberry. Mmm. Mmm. Those are good shortbread cookies, aren't they? They're real good. Blueberry's good? I knew he I knew he would go for the blueberry first because that's his favorite. Blueberry's awesome. Mmm. Is it good? They're real good. Both of them get my mm 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 mm. That's it for the thumbprint cookie recipe. If you try this recipe, please let us know in the comments because we do love to know how you like all our recipes. And also, if you've not subscribed yet, what you waiting for? Hit that subscribe button. And as always, guys, we want to thank you for allowing a little bit of Big Joe Malia's world into your world. We'll see you soon, guys. Bye.